Today I'm out east, but Tower Bridge is only my starting point. I'm going to show you one of the more offbeat attractions around here. What you have to do is take a short walk down Tower Bridge Road. Well, admittedly it's not that short. Uh, anyway, keep going until you reach the roundabout. Turn left and keep going until you come to Mandela Way in Bermondsey. Here you'll find something that's rather off the beaten track. Ironically, it's on tracks. Oh, enough riddling, this is Stompy. Stompy is a Soviet-built T-34 tank. The T-34s were first built in 1940. They fought in the Second World War, the Korean War, the Angolan Civil War, and many other conflicts. In fact, there are several countries that still use them. That is one solid design. Stompy's story is an interesting one. It originally belonged to the Czech army and took part in the invasion of Czechoslovakia by the Warsaw Pact in 1968, an attempt to suppress protests against Soviet influence in that country. So how did it get from Czechoslovakia to Bermondsey? Well, for that, you can thank Sir Ian McKellen. McKellen starred in and co-wrote the 1995 film Richard III, an adaptation of Shakespeare's play of the same name set in the 1930s. For this, they needed a whole load of tanks, and so the decommissioned Stompy and Friends found themselves pressed into service. After filming, the tank was bought by a local businessman, Russell Gray, as a present for his son in one of the most wholesome pieces of arms dealing I've ever heard of. Then a problem arose. Gray had a small plot of land that he intended to build on. Southwark Council refused permission, so the land was now useless for Gray's purposes. But rather than sell up, he decided to prank the council. The story goes that he asked the council if he could put a tank on the land. Thinking he meant a water tank, the council said yes, that was fine. History does not record their reactions when an actual tank showed up, with its guns pointed directly at the council offices. Incidentally, if you've ever wondered why an armoured fighting vehicle and a container for liquids should both be known as tanks, the answer goes back to the First World War when the vehicles were invented. The British Admiralty, when delivering their secret weapon, claimed they were water tanks. Just as well, otherwise Mr Grey wouldn't have been able to play his little trick. These days the land is a small park and the tank a beloved curiosity. It often receives repaints from local artists, and tends to be rather more colourful than most tanks. I think there's something strangely touching about the fact that a machine of war should now be used for the benefit of the community. Just a thought. Anyway, thanks for watching.